happening now, investigators have determined what sparked a fire that heavily damaged an iconic Jamestown bar that is now sparking safety discussions. And a Jamestown City Councilwoman has announced her bid for mayor. We speak with her one-on-one. -on -one. Plus, we're breaking down efforts to save an important Lake Erie Harbor in Chautauqua County. Live and on demand, this is WNY News Now. Thank you for joining us for WNY News Now. I'm Bronson Rasmussen, in for Justin Gould. Those stories and more are coming up, but first... It's almost unbelievable spring weather that has invaded our area, Andrew. And it's bringing some of those above average temperatures to our region this week. We're starting with first defense weather with our chief forecaster, Andrew Stevenson. Nice and week. while many are really enjoying this, Andrew, it, it's about to turn sour, isn't it? Yeah, and hopefully you got outside and enjoyed those record-breaking temperatures well, yesterday, which I'll tell you about in a minute because it felt like spring yesterday. But for today, a cold front's going to move through later tonight, and that's going to snap us back into reality. First defense Doppler radar shows some rain showers and a couple of wet snowflakes just starting to move into Erie County. Rain showers will continue to overtake the region through the rest of the afternoon. So, yes, we had some record-breaking temperatures across the region yesterday. Erie, Pennsylvania, an old record, 65 degrees set back in 1954. That record is gone. Erie reached the high of 68 degrees yesterday. Here in Jamestown at the Jamestown Airport, yesterday their old record was 62. That record is also gone because Jamestown reached a high of 64 degrees. So new records were set across the region yesterday for February 15th. As far as today goes, we're not setting any records. The NOAA Storm Prediction Center does continue with a marginal risk for severe weather out ahead of a cold front later tonight. Now the better ingredients for thunderstorms and severe weather will be found well to our south so we're not really expecting much but if we do see a thunderstorm later the main threat would be damaging winds and some heavy rain. So for the rest of the afternoon out there mainly cloudy skies. Rain will overtake the region through the rest of the afternoon. Temperatures today will range from the upper 30s to lower 40s across the Niagara frontier in the Buffalo area to the upper 40s to, to the upper and lower 50s across the southern tier on northwestern Pennsylvania. I'll have a look at that full forecast coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Andrew, we'll see you then. A fire at an iconic Jamestown bar is sparking some fire safety discussions. On Wednesday, the Jamestown Fire Department determined a discarded cigarette started the fire that injured one person and damaged the Bullfrog Hotel on East 2nd Street. Due to the small size of the blaze, fire investigators were able to quickly identify what caused the initial fire and ruled it an accident. While the number of fires caused by carelessly discarding of smoking materials has dwindled over the years, Fire Chief Matthew Kuhn tells us that community members should always be mindful when it comes to fire safety. Please just be very careful with anything that you're going to have lit inside of a house, whether it be a cigarette, whether it be a candle. You never want to leave those things unattended. Another thing we see a lot this time of year is people using portable heaters. Please make sure that they are plugged in to an approved outlet. In addition to being mindful around the house, the fire chief adds that smokers should be outside whenever they decide to light one up and to properly discard unused materials after the fact. Governor Kathy Hochul announced Wednesday that $658 million in state funding will go towards improving the access to high quality health care, including big funding allocation for Jamestown. According to the governor's office, the statewide health care facility transformation program will provide funding for more than 100 projects across the state. The governor's office says the money will improve inpatient care, primary care, mental health, and long-term care needs. In our area, UPMC Chautauqua received $29.8 million, and the Chautauqua C Center will receive $1.2 million. A project that would have renovated the dilapidated Silver Creek School into affordable housing has fallen through. The Chautauqua Industrial Development Agency has been working with Region 9 Housing Corporation 
to transform the building into 47 units. However, Wednesday, the corporation's director announced his company is ceasing its involvement in pursuing low-income housing tax credit development. The Chautauqua County officials hope to find another developer to take the project on, utilizing a $1 million grant for this project and other technical assistance and incentives. Just announced GOP candidate for the city of Jamestown's mayor is outlining her experience as she kicks off her campaign. Councilwoman Kim Eklund was endorsed for the job by the Jamestown City Republican Committee, who revealed their pick on Wednesday afternoon. The longtime councilwoman at large was first elected to the governing body in 2004. Well, to be honest with you, when I started off in politics, I didn't think I'd be here as long as I am and certainly didn't have this on my radar, obviously. Um, nothing is ever written in stone from the start. I've enjoyed my journey. I enjoy helping this community, and that's what brought me to here today. The Republican has served on the City Council's Public Work and Finance Committees. As the current Finance Committee Chair, Eklund tells us her experience working in finance sector, including as a cost estimator, senior data management, cost analysis, and accounting supervisor, is her greatest asset. I wouldn't put myself out there if I didn't think I was a viable candidate, number one. Uh, my years of experience on council and in government, but also partnered with my life experience and my work experience professionally. Unless another candidate comes forward, Eklund will face Democratic Mayor Eddie Sunquist in this fall's general election. I've had a lot of support, obviously, all through my tenure on council. It, it's, it takes a village is what I always say, and I can't do it alone, so Yes, I need the support at the election booth, but I also need the support after, and this has been no different. In fact, as soon as the endorsement came out, my phone has been ringing off the hook with, it's about time, congratulations, couldn't be happier. So we'll see how the cards fall. Now that Eklund has the Republican Committee's unanimous endorsement, her next step is to get enough signatures on her petition to fully run this fall. Well, next, as WNY News Now continues, we hit the beach and check in with the new push underway to save a vital Lake Erie Harbor in Chautauqua County. And later, we explain as a new policy in the Jamestown area Wegmans impacting those getting EBT and SNAP benefits. Stay with us as WNY News Now will be right back. Coverage that matters. This is WNY News Now. EagleZip.com is your local one-stop shop for all of your home and business computer needs. Located on Fluvan Avenue Extension, just outside of Jamestown, EagleZip.com sells and services all brands of desktops and laptops, as well as servers and network equipment for your business. All new computer sales include transferring your data from your old computer, plus a two-year warranty. Call EagleZip.com today. Stop by EagleZip.com today and let us make computers easy for you. So you think you can cook? We're looking for chefs ready to test their skills. Competing in a charity cooking show competition that features a platter of unusual ingredients, including popular local cuisine. Judged by a panel of local celebs, chefs are tested in three rounds before a winner is crowned. So you think you can cook? Register online at stsusancenter.org. Produced by Channel 716. All proceeds raised benefit the St. Susan Center in Jamestown, New York. Looking for a fair and honest auto mechanic? Look no further than DeWyas Auto Service. Located at 140 Main Street in Randolph, our family-owned business is ready for all of your automotive needs. From general service to more complex repairs, count on DeWyas Auto to keep you on the road. We not only keep your cars running smoothly, but also looking great with our expert detailing crew. Send us a message on Facebook or call us today at 716-358-2292 to set up an appointment. DeWyas Auto Service. Fair, honest, and the best prices guaranteed. You're watching WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. 
The Buffalo Tops supermarket shooter was in court Wednesday to learn his fate. When a man lunged at him, the drama was caught on video and happened during the victim impact statements at Grendon's sentencing hearing. A man charged at Grendon, New York State court officials, quickly stopped the man before he got to him. Both men were escorted out of the courtroom through separate doors. It might have shaken some in the audience as sniffles were heard. After the incident, when Grendon returned to the courtroom, he showed no sign of emotion. However, he had been crying during the victim's statements. Later in the hearing, he did apologize to the families, saying that he was very sorry for taking the lives of their loved ones. Now, Grendon had pled guilty to 10 counts of first degree murder and other charges. The judge gave him the maximum sentence, life in prison without parole. The DA says the man who rushed at Grendon will not face charges. Federal efforts are underway to help restore the Barcelona Harbor in Westfield. On Wednesday, local and federal officials surveyed the northern Stockwood County community to find out what must be done in order to save the, fin the fishing pier. Our Julia Gress has more. It's a federal harbor. Uh, it's full of sediment. It's been all shoaled in. Um, and we've had some very drastic weather these last couple of years, storms that, that drew a lot of sediment in. Uh, we have to get a solution with the Army Corps of Engineers. I wanted to see it with my own two eyes. Unusual winters, like what we are experiencing this week, has devastated the harbor. With no ice on the lake, it normally would protect the shoreline. And water levels, as Dave mentioned, are high, and the winds have been extreme. So it's created quite a uh, crisis for us here. So far, no immediate action has been taken to rectify the growing issue. Four years ago, you know, the harbor was open. Uh, four years later, with consistent seiches every year, uh, it's really been closed off. So what was once a safe harbor designation by the Coast Guard is no longer that same designation. Uh, this is the only safe harbor between Erie and Dunkirk, so it is uh, it's a concern. Congressman Nick Langworthy says safety, right commerce, here. and tourism is on the line, which is why he wants the project to be expedited. They're on the docket to get some dredging this year. The, the scope of the project might be much larger than it once was thought to be because of the, the what we've had this winter. Um, we want to see this cleaned out if we have to go pursue additional monies, you know, in, in this year's budget, so be it. Though dredging the harbor will allow it to open again for boat season, more will need to be done to sustain the harbor long term. Current break wall is past its life expectancy. Um, I think there needs to be a breakwater in front of this, kind of like a, a, a windbreak on a three-way where you, you plant trees to let the snow fall out before it gets to the pavement. This is really no different. Julia Grass, WNY News Now. Julia, thank you. A few weeks ago, the Senate Judiciary Committee threw out Governor Hochul's nomination for the State Court of Appeals, Chief Judge Hector Lassell, but Wednesday, senators voted on this on the floor. In January, Senate Judiciary Committee hearing Chief Judge nominee Hector was not moved to the floor for a vote, sending many lawmakers into upset. Last week, Senator Anthony Plumbo filed a lawsuit to force a full vote. Today, the Senate ultimately voted 39 to 20, meaning the nomination has died on the floor. But the senator says that merits of the lawsuit still stand. But as indicated earlier, this is about what is good for the entire state. We have 63 representatives, and that's really the nature of this Constitution. It's the people's voice. We all act as their voice in this process. Now he says that he is hoping the lawsuit establishes a court precedent that judicial nominees always go to at the Senate floor. But Senate Majority Leader Andrea Stewart-Cousins disagrees. Our rules make sense. Why go through the resources? Why go through the excess energy if you know, based in committee, it's not going to prevail on the floor. So all this did, frankly, was underscore the value of the committee process and illustrate why it makes sense. Now, New York Governor Kathy Hochul issued an official statement 
saying that the vote was a victory for the Constitution, but was not a vote on the merits of the justice. Moving forward, Governor Hochul will likely be putting forward another nomination for the Chief Judge of the Court of Appeals in the coming weeks. Wegmans has announced it's now accepting electronic benefits transfer and supplemental nutrition assistance program for online grocery orders. Customers who use EBT SNAPS as their payment for online grocery orders, which can only be made via Wegmans.com and the Wegmans app, will get free delivery for the first three orders, according to Wegmans. Customers who use the EBT SNAP can easily filter out items that only SNAP eligible items show up. SNAP funds are designated so that they can be used for SNAP eligible items so a secondary form payment will be needed for non-SNAP eligible items and fees. The move to accept SNAP EBT is part of a larger company-wide effort to help people get the nutrition they need. For more information about using SNAP benefits on Wegmans can be found on Wegmans.com. Well, coming up, more on the Ohio train derailment disaster as the community demands awareness about environmental health concerns. And later, we have an inside look at the decades-old video just released of the Titanic wreckage in the Atlantic Ocean. But first, we'll return with a look at our full weather forecast. Stay with us as WNY News Now will be right back. with coverage that matters. This is WNY News Now. Have you ever wanted to live out your dreams? Hunt, fish, in all corners of the earth? Well, now's your chance. Follow Primitive Patriot Outdoors as we live out our dreams and show you how to live out yours through outdoor adventures. From Western New York, to Africa, to all corners of the earth, follow us on this adventure. It's an experience you've never seen before. Lead and Lures, Roku TV, channel 716. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. Testicular cancer is the leading form of cancer in men aged 15 to 35. One in 250 men will be diagnosed with testicular cancer but 98% will survive if detected early. As a survivor, I believe early detection is the key. Learn how to do a testicular self-exam and other important facts about testicular cancer at oneball4tc.com. There's an old saying, there's no news in the newsroom. Well, it's true. The time I spend at the anchor desk is just part of my day. Most of our time is spent gathering stories in the community, stories that matter to you. We can't do it alone, and we need your help. When you see breaking news or have a news tip we should know about, drop us a line on Facebook today. Email our news desk or call our newsroom at 488-7226 so we can bring those stories straight back to you. Fast, accurate, and every day. First events weather. Welcome back to WNY News Now. Currently in downtown Jamestown, we're under cloudy skies. Current temperature 40 degrees with an east wind of 5 miles per hour, and it feels like 36 degrees outside. Well, did you see the sunshine la did you see the sunset last night? If not, I'll let you take a look at this beautiful picture of the sunset from Dunkirk. This was taken by our own Jackson Hickey. It was an absolute beautiful day yesterday, beautiful spring-like day, and we had a beautiful sunset. And here's another photo from the Dunkirk Pier. Curtis of Jackson. Absolutely beautiful photos. If you have any weather photos you want to share with us, you can always share it with us on social media using the hashtag MyLocalWX. It was also quite windy yesterday here. Some of the wind, port, wind gust reports from around the region. Buffalo 52 miles per hour. Dunkirk 52. Fredonia 48 here in Jamestown. The Jamestown Airport 
reported a gust of 44 and ran off at 41 miles per hour. So here's what's happening across the northeast right now. Low pressure to our south will push an area of rain across the region through the rest of the afternoon. And then a cold front's going to move through later tonight. And that's going to switch the precipitation from rain over to snow. So let's time it out for the rest of the afternoon. Sh rain showers take over. And then that cold front moves through. And behind the cold front, there will be a brief period of wintry mix freezing rain, some sleep possible in the early overnight hours, and then colder air will filter in, and that's going to switch the, switch the wintry mix over to light snow showers through the day tomorrow. Not really expecting much in the way of accumulation. Most areas might see a dust, and if that, maybe an inch or two across the highest hilltops. And then high pressure will build in by the time Saturday rolls around, and we'll have another sunny weekend in store. So tonight's forecast, rain showers will switch over to a period of wintry mix in the evening, and then switching over to light snow overnight. Temperatures tonight, low temperatures, I should say, in the upper 20s to the lower to mid 30s. And now the next seven days from Ultimate Satellite Solutions. Chilly day tomorrow, temperatures only in the mid 20s with some snow showers. Partly sunny skies for both Saturday and Sunday. Saturday temperatures in the mid 30s. Sunday temperatures in the lower 40s. And then our next best chance for rain comes Monday and then some snow showers by the time we get into Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. But temperatures still right around average to a few degrees above average. Now I know Andrew it's a bit far out but are we going to get that major winter storm around St. Patrick's Day that mm -hmm. comes every year? Don't let your guard down. Winter's still here for at least another month and a half. All right we'll grab you some headlines from around the nation. Residents in East o Pestline, Ohio are demanding answers. It's been nearly two weeks since a southern train carrying hazardous materials derailed in their town and sparked a days-long blaze. Officials say the air is safe, but an odor has lingered. They say the water is safe, but thousands of fish have ended up dead. In a packed community meeting held Wednesday night, residents aired their frustration. What locals want most of all now is more communication from government officials. They've gotten mixed messages and just want some clarity worrisome from a standpoint of they tell you that they're they're not harmful we had the EPA in here and they said well it's not harmful you can bring your children in and then two days later they decide that well it's actually a toxic chemical I'm not a chemist I'm not a scientist I'm a sports broadcaster um, but you have to rely on the professionals and when you can't rely on what they tell you at first uh, it's a little bit troublesome and a little bit worrisome at least two lawsuits have been filed against Norfolk Southern over the train derailment, including a Class A action suit by some residents. Well, in the past week, the U.S. has shot down a total of four objects hovering over our skies. The activity up in our air has stirred tensions with China and questioned our safety. At the Capitol this week, national security is a top focus. Our Washington, D.C. correspondent Rachel Knapp reports these events have sparked a fresh focus on the immediate threats to the homeland. That is a big kill. The balloon is completely destroyed. That's the audio from the fighter jets after taking down the Chinese spy balloon that hovered over the U.S. mainland more than a week ago. The White House says divers were able to recover a significant amount of debris from that balloon. Congressional members have had classified briefings on this. Senators on both sides of the aisle feeling more at ease, but members are still critical of the Biden administration's lack of transparency on this. I think what not only Michiganders need right now, but also all the American people, they're concerned that the White House has not really stepped up and had a press conference and really had the president come out and say, folks, you know, here's what happened. Here's how we dealt with it. Here's how we're going to deal with the future. Michigan's representative Jack Berkman says the Department of Defense immediately contacted him about the balloon over Lake Huron this past weekend. The White House stated yesterday they believe the other three balloons shot down, including the one over Lake Huron, might be benign balloons, posing no threat to the U.S. But at the Capitol, senators are laser focused on national security. China has been projecting power in many ways for a long time, the last 10 or 15 years. Their doubling of their military budget, their investment in Built and Road Initiative to 
create bases, create opportunities worldwide um, to project their power. Russia has been projecting its power through an invasion of Ukraine. International relations experts say the U.S. needs to focus on countering China. The Secretary of State, the President, and all leaders have to show strength, but also show that they're, they're, they're willing to dialogue with other countries. At the Capitol, Rachel Knapp reporting. Rachel, thank you. The opioid overdose antidote Narcan could soon be sold over the counter as a nasal spray. Two FDA advisory committees met Wednesday and voted unanimously in favor of making the spray available over the counter so more people could have access. The final decision will now go to the FDA Commissioner Dr. Robert Califf. He has the sole discretion on acting on actions taken with regard to the drug approval. Researchers show that the wider availability of Narcan could save overdose deaths across the country reach record numbers. The drug company seeking the FDA's approval say its over-the-counter nasal spray version of Narcan nasal spray version is designated to be used by people without any medical training. It also says that the spray is easier to administer than the injection. Full approval could come as early as this year. While well, next, for the first time in decades, rare video of the Titanic wreckage has been released. We have more on that coming up. You're watching WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. So you think you can cook? We're looking for chefs ready to test their skills. Competing in a charity cooking show competition that features a platter of unusual ingredients, including popular local cuisine. Judged by a panel of local celebs, chefs are tested in three rounds before a winner is crowned. So you think you can cook? Register online at stsusancenter.org. Produced by Channel 716. All proceeds raised benefit the St. Susan Center in Jamestown, New York. Something more than a birthday is happening here. Once you can see it, you can help. The sooner you recognize the signs of autism, the sooner you can make a lifetime of difference for your child. Start by answering a few simple questions at screenforautism.org. WNY News Now is covering stories that matter to you. This year's theme, Fire Won't Wait, Plan Your Escape, focuses on the importance of knowing your way out of a home or business in the event that a fire were to break out. The Hello Summer Festival in downtown Jamestown, and as you mentioned, the whole goal of this is to connect Jamestown's kids with things to do over the summer. WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. Well, the public is getting a rare look at the inside of the wreckage of the Titanic. David Bannock reports on the New York, the new video released on the never before seen video of the 1986 dive. Nearly 37 years after he shot these images, Robert Ballard still remembers what he felt as he set eyes on the Titanic shipwreck at the bottom of the Atlantic. And that was just struck me of how well preserved it was. Ballard led the team from the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute that discovered the Titanic in 1985. And he went back the following year with a submarine and a robotic vehicle equipped with a camera that ventured inside the wreck. Well, I think that's what people will probably enjoy the most is the inside of the Titanic. Uh, which uh, until now that's not been released. And you're seeing Jason Jr. Dana Yerger was also on the original 1985 discovery mission. But what do you think when you look at these images now, all these years later? Well, I, I mean, I think of a lot of interesting things. I mean, the first thing you think about is, you know, 
all those people died. The release of the video coincides with the 25th anniversary of the movie Titanic. With new technology, Ballard continues to hunt for other shipwrecks around the world. He says young people sometimes ask him to leave something for them to find, to which he answers, The United Nations estimates there's three million ancient shipwrecks and I have found about a hundred. So I've left most for you. Well, that's all the time that we have for us today. We'll leave you this live look over our studio in downtown Jamestown. You have a nice one.